Welcome, you are with the Skane Diaries. It is Monday the 12th of June, uh, episode 256. Welcome along. Uh, sorry I'm late. Monday's Monday mill day. So, you know, you get that. Oh, I was rushing around and then I got chatting to a customer and then I suddenly realised the time's like, it's seven minutes past, I need to go. So here I am. So welcome along for this Monday. And as you can see by me all rugged up, it is a bit chilly here, as I am sure it is chilly at your place as well. Yes, no, we definitely had, good morning, Jeanette, uh, we definitely had uh, what I would call a classic winter weekend here across the weekend. It was cold, it was grey, it was wet, uh, and it meant it was perfect for some actual nutting. Welcome on in, everybody. Come on in. Good to see you. A um, couple of things to talk about this morning. Uh, first thing is, uh, what is the first thing to let you know? The Yarnology is up and live. I, I can't remember whether I mentioned that on Thursday. So that is up live and ready. And also too, because the weather was absolute rubbish, um, I actually managed to get some knitting done over the weekend. Could you believe it? Yes, I did. Managed to get some knitting. And I've even brought it in to show you, to prove to you that I managed to get some knitting done. So... To refresh memories for people, as I'm digging it all out at the bottom. Yes, this is not a skein's yarn. Um, this is not a skein's yarn. So this is a yarn I was given. It's a wool yarn's yarn, but it's a yarn that I was given um, by my brother for Christmas. And it's, you know, a bit good. So I decided, since I hadn't knit him anything other than, like, the old hat or what have you, that I would do my jumper. So, and I'm glad you're here, Charles, because I know you put in some um, stuff on that. So here's the body of the jumper, which is essentially done. Oh, well, I hope I don't have stitches go so, and there it goes with the um, marker sailing off the end. So it's in stocking stitch there with a little bit of twisted rib detailing at the side so very very simple and I, so I've gone bottom up as you can see and I'm making it up on the fly as I go along which is very apt of Marie to do and I'm using as a template um, a sweater that I know fits him because he's borrowed it actually when he's come to stay with me before which this is it here and I'm using that as my sort of um sizing template because ultimately you know that's sort of what I need to do and I'm up to sleep so I have done the body up to where I believe the armholes are going to be and then I've now knitting sleeve so there was sleeve one that is finished and for the longest time sleeve two has been sitting um, in sleeve island and you can actually see oh and have I gone and done a Oh my gosh, and I've just gone and realised that I have gone and cocked it up on that sleeve. I've just gone and realised I've done some knitting. Look at that. Look, can you see the mistake? I've just realised that now. Oh, how annoying. The things you find out when you come out, I'm going to show it to you. I don't know how I would have done that. I would have been half, I would have been a million miles away. Let's, let's turn it inside out and you'll see it more on the inside out yes I've gone and um, done I keep the ribbon going one two three four five six stitches there they are look right there oh, stop it and that is actually roughly where I um, had gotten to so I've actually done I've actually done that much since that time so the six million dollar question is do I rip it back or do I just ignore it and keep going or do I actually just drop back those stitches and fix them and I need to <laughs> Jeanette saying why o'clock then <laughs> I know Jeanette it is it is <laughs> Oh, funny. That's so funny because I was so proud of myself for how much, how much I've done. I'll actually possibly, because this is a gift, what I think I might do, because it's actually on the opposite side of where I'm at. And now that Char I've got Charles here, I've got phone a friend in the house. What if you cut it and rework and kitchen kitchener it back? Yeah, that's a thought, Charles. The only thing about that is kitchenering those twisted stitches. It'd be a pain in the ass. Is my thought with that. 
The only thing I'm wondering is whether I just do them one at a time, whether I just drop back that because it's nowhere near the increasing, whether where I've got that problem stitch, I just drop that one stitch, go all the way down, fix it, and then pick them all the way back up again. And it'll take a little bit of time and then just drop down each one and just do them one at a time. And just be, it'll take an hour or so and be a bit patient and do it that way. Because it is literally, I've, I can see what I've gone and done. I've gone ribbity rib 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 and then I've just kept ribbing and then for, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stitches. I think that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll call it a design detail. Oh, trust me, I'm famous for doing that, Charles. And that, that's the other, I mean, look, if it, if it were a stocking stitch on the stocking stitch side, I'd possibly do that. But the other thing, just looking at it, because it's in reverse stocking stitch and it's there, and as you can see, like that's where I've been, you can see where it, my magic loop spot. Um, by the time I... I'll see how I feel. I might do one. What I might do, <laughs> Jeanette's nodding her head is the quickest way. I know. What I might do is I might do one of them and see how much of an arse ache, arse ache that is. And if it's an arse ache, then I'll go, yeah, design floor. If it's not an arse ache, I might actually do it. We'll see how I go. But anyway, that's until I discovered my mistake on live telly, um, that's where I'm at. And look, I've only got a couple of inches to go. But see, when I hold it up like that, look, see, when I hold it up like that, it sticks, it sticks out like dog's bollocks. And so that'll annoy me. So I think that's what I'll do. I won't take it. It's all right. God, he's not, I've decided he's probably not going to get it on time anyway. But that's where I'm at. I've got that much left to do. Yeah, well, there's, Charles is just saying it may not be quite so difficult to drop down. I like the idea of doing it one stitch at a time. Um, yeah, and I think just one stitch at a time. I reckon if I just pin it one at a time, drop it down, crochet hook back, and I'll do it from the inside, like from the stocking stitch side, drop it down. Next one, drop it down. I think that's how I do it. And if I do the first one, yeah, I think I think it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's annoying. It is annoying, but it just shows you we all make mistakes. But once I've done my sleeves, then I have to um, uh, attach them to my little friend here. So I have, um, so, you know, I've got that. So what we've got here is uh, I, I did make sure when I did this that um, there is actually a little bit of extra room here. So I'm not going to be doing a lot of... Uh, I'm going to be making sure that I've got some extra stitches to join up across here for when I go to do my sleeve. So that so instead of worrying about the extra stitches here, I'm going to have the extra stitches around the base of that sleeve in those last few rounds, I've decided. And then I'm going to um, uh, just do a little set in, I think. Set in, go up. So it'll be plain, a stocking stitch to here with a reverse here, and then this, this shoulder will settle in. So that, that's the plan at this stage. Um, but I'll need to fix that sleeve first. But it was quite good, though, to at least get a pretty reasonable amount done. And the thing that annoys me is I've been knitting this and I have no Chardonnay's been involved. Maybe that was the problem. I don't know. The other good news, too, and I haven't got them to show you because he has gone and um, swiped them already. Remember I said to you my son wanted another pair of the Norwegian house slippers. So I finished them yesterday and I ran them through the washing machine twice and to be fair they need a third wash because um, uh, obviously <laughs> what I had in there wasn't. Uh, some, some of the yarns felted more readily than others uh, but it's, it's mostly uh, two of the yarn, three of the yarns are pretty felted and then one of the uh, and then the two, two yarns not quite as much. But um, that partially felt it and that was enough he, he saw them drying he snagged them and he's wearing them he literally I have I'd have to rip would have had to have ripped them off his feet to bring them here he barely let them dry before he put them on he just loves them that much right Robin is asking Marie what is the beautiful pink jersey in the back of you well I'm glad you asked Robin I'm glad you asked uh this is the new sweater that Delene 
uh, has just made for us from the new Incognito. It is utterly stunning. It's called, uh, it used, uh, nine, this, this one here used nine balls of the Lotus in the leather base. And the design is called Sea Haven. And it is by JST Knitwear Designs, Gen, uh, Jennifer Shield Toland, Shields Toland. Um, it's a Gansey inspired sweater. So as you can see, that's quite Gansey through there. It's yoke and styling and then plain through. Now she um, has said she's given it an advanced beginner. It looks like it, and I've just had a look at it too. And I guess, Delene, if you're, I know you're there, you're lurking. Um, but it's sort of a knit that, uh, would be quite a good one if you're wanting to sort of move into knitting in the round. But doesn't it look stunning? I just think it looks absolutely stunning. The, the fabric, as you can see, the fabric that this yarn creates is beautiful. It is, honestly, I cannot tell you how gorgeous this yarn is. It is um, utterly amazing. This pattern, it looks fabulous in this pattern. And looking at this, and how well this has come out, particularly with the twisted stitch detail up here and um, this lovely Gansey style here, is if you've got gingerbread in your um, in your library, uh, which truly myrtle gingerbread, I think this would make an incredible gingerbread. It would look so, so good. Sue's just saying, Jay's Teacher Designs has just released a fingering version oh, of this um, design, perfect for sock mortician. Oh, hey, Sue, thanks for that. That's a good heads up. It is just a really, really neat design. Um, now, I don't know whether it's a paid one. I haven't actually honestly looked because Claire picked this one. Um, and I just think it's it's a stunner. So in fact, I'm looking at it thinking, hmm, quite like that. Yeah, it is gorgeous, Patricia. It is really, really lovely. Uh, it's great. It's got both written and charted instructions. Uh, and yeah, really good. Oh, there's some really good information in terms of extra yarn needed for body lengthening as well and, and what you would actually need which is actually a handy thing to have uh, and you can go um, long or short sleeves you can it's a cracker I think it's a really and it's the stitch definition I mean you can see the stitch definition even from way back here is just beautiful Absolutely beautiful. So if you haven't managed to pick up any of that incognito, it is definitely well worth popping into stash. The other thing too is if you've got a mum um, who is particularly good uh, with hand washing, so they, you know, they are not going to try and throw this in the washing machine. I have to say this yarn would be wonderful for baby garments. It is so beautifully anxiously soft so any of the Lisa Reef designs in the DK would look amazing in this absolutely amazing so don't feel that um, you couldn't knit it for a baby garment it is super super soft but it will need to be hand wash only but it is utterly divine uh, yeah there's just honestly there's so many that that would be amazing and even just if you wanted something completely plain but it feels good I mean the oatmeal that I've knitted uh, that would be great in oatmeal the fox bay the fox bay that I've just completed would look incredible in this it is just and I've got Shoji on today and I have to say Shoji Shoji in that yarn would be incredible because I've done, I mean, as you know, I did mine with Cozy and Whisper Fine, but this sort of, the stitch definition that you would get on this would be quite crisp. And the yarn that was used in the pattern was a smooth, quite cylindrical yarn. So you had this re, the stitch definition here was quite defined, whereas uh, obviously for me, it's a, it's a little softer because I've got the halo of the, the mohair there so uh yeah if you were thinking of torturing yourself with two and a half meters of um <laughs> that big long swathe to do a shoji uh definitely give this a go and i have look i i love wearing it i'm never gonna knit it again but i love wearing it and, and also to any sort of shawls as well it's just so delicious and squishy and lovely and and um it is worth it so i think 850 a ball i think it's the same as our orb and it's the same count as our orb. And the other thing too with this incognito is because it's not uh, treated, it's got a little bit more bounce and grip to it. I'll show it to you. Yeah. 
See, I mean, look at that bounce. Noing, 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 noing. All that wonderful bounce. And it has got that little bit of grip there. It makes it fantastic for slip stitch colour work. It will, and it just holds and it grips. And if you need to stick something, this will stick beautifully, beautifully. So the nice thing is, is there's the two sort of bases. There's the leather base, which is this one, which is the softer and lighter. And then you've got the... Um, gray base which is a little bit deeper and richer but the nice thing is is that you can you we, you've got some contrast there so like the leather is this beautiful beautiful soft sandy top and you can mix that with the tourmaline which is this dark broody gray and the tourmaline gives you that lovely perfect contrast and then you can add a pop of color whether it be the lotus whether it be um uh, the dried moss, I think, would make a great with ugh, so that'd be gorgeous. You know, that sort of rich, deep, mustardy um, color. Whether you do a more brighter version with the leather or a darker, broodier version with the grey, it will just it'll give you the contrasts. So have it, have a little play around. Um, I just think it was stunning, utterly stunning. Uh, what else? I think I'm just so behind. This is the trouble with Mill Day, so it gets you all betwixt and between. Uh, hopefully you are staying warm and keeping your knitting up to date. The is where uh, oh that's the other thing she's waving a ball at me in the shop. Right, I think that she's reminding me to tell you that the indicator is almost all gone. So I think that's what that prompt is. There's only a handful of colours left. So if you haven't picked up the Indecita Baby Alpaca, um, make sure you do that. Uh, and also, too, I haven't had a chance to dive into them. I think Kathy's here. The the I see West Knits has been a busy lad, put out a number of patterns, and those modular sort of designs, again, perfect for these sorts of yarns so we'll be having a look at some of those but until then I'm going to keep moving I know short and sweet today I haven't even started on the newsletter see Mill Day Mondays I'm just behind right from the get-go uh, have a good rest of week and I will see you on Thursday until then take care <laughs>